When the closing of Victory School means the end of an era as far as a special community that a school would foster. And it's not just Victory, but it seems to be around town, around the province, the country, our education system is changing. And can you speak more about what Victory School and the community it fostered was all about and what it meant to uh, family and staff? Well, I think that uh, it was very significant to family, staff, and to the people in the community itself to have this school named for a special event in our history, namely World War I victory. That was the essence of, of community spirit. They didn't name it after an individual, they named it after a, something that they were just so elated about, victory, return to normalcy, build our community. And, and that's exactly what happened. We built this beautiful school, stone entrance way, uh, the focal point of the community. Not just a school open during school hours, but a school that served all kinds of community events. It served the, the, the citizens well. It was a, 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 the center for sports activities. It was where, where people gathered for bingos, for all kinds of things. It was different in those days, of course. Entertainment was limited. Uh, what did you do? You went to the school for an event. The concerts were big things. The staff was more uh, interactive with the community. Parents were more f familiar with each other because there was a community. And look at the, the community that Victory serves. Uh, you know, right alongside the main route into Parry Sound, Carrington Village, a few steps from the harbor. Beautiful location. And, and that school, it was typical of the way schools were in that particular era. It's not as easy in these days to, to run a school that way. The, the, the schools tend to be moving outside of the community. Students are more bused to schools before everyone walked to school. Well, in our area, of course, we had the rural schools and they're all closing because we're building monster schools. And whether that's good or bad, I'm not going to evaluate it. But I think it did cause us to lose a sense of that community involvement. It's, it's easier when you have a smaller uh, milieu where, where people all know each other. And uh, th that, that era, I, I think, is, is being lost. You mentioned uh, in a previous conversation that this is not a nine to five uh, school, or at least it wasn't. No, uh, you, you know, it's, it, it served all kinds of purposes. You, you, you could have a, 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 an event for a church, for this uh, uh, particular concert, all kinds of things would, would, be, would be taking place in the school. And now, I mean, we have, all, we, we have all kinds of entertainment. The school is no longer the focal point for doing things. I mean, it's, it's just not the way things are. The sports are more organized now. In those days, it was, you know, just kind of pick things up. We, we have a playroom there. Let's get a bunch of kids, go over, have some fun. It's, uh, things are more restrictive. Well then, having said that, this fits very much into what the Home and School Club was all about at Victory School, which was around for a long time. Can you speak to that? Well, the, the Home and School Club Home and School Association. It was a, a province-wide organization. Each community had its own home and school association in its neighborhood school. And uh, it was quite a bit dissimilar from what we now have, which is a parent council, which is more involved in governance things. Uh, I, I, I'm sure they do an excellent job, but, but the Home and School Association was more grassroots. You know, let's more for what bake sales, pie sales, uh, getting the kids out on trips, doing uh, things for the school, improving uh, things that were needed, new b basketballs, volleyballs, new nets, any, any trips. I, I, I'm sure it's, it's uh, still done that way, 
but uh, it's been taken over by what's called a parents council and uh, the parents council of course has more authority the home and school was more an auxiliary organization and very very uh, you know mom and pop type of an organization that's a good analogy and and certainly it sounds like it was before the days that we invented uh, red tape well, absolutely no red tape lots of sales and uh, lots of in and out of the school before before the organization of volunteers per se I think volunteers in the school tremendous in this day and age but uh, in, in the early days teachers were a little more turf protective it was my classroom I don't want people in it well now it's become an accepted fact that volunteers do a tremendous job in those days it was the home and school that kind of worked well on the outside of, of the uh, of the sphere of yeah. influence yeah. but still did a job in a different way so uh, yeah things change nothing stays the same smart kids survive anywhere but some of the kids that are more at risk or disenfranchised would seem to fall through the cracks in the bigger schools but the smaller schools always seem to have their back do you agree with that well I think that uh, no matter the size of the school, you're going to have special needs students. And uh, in, in many instances, larger schools have more resources. Smaller schools uh, depend on outside resources coming in. On the other hand, they may have smaller numbers, so a, a better focus on individual needs. But needs are there, they've been always there. I think in, in today's school system, uh, there's more opportunity uh, to get professional help to help children with needs to, to look at these needs and say look let's do the best we can make the child in uh, uh, and uh, put the child in an integrated setting see how uh, because that child is going to have to get along in the world someday and you know we can't uh, argue with the advances that have been made in in treating those special needs. Len, you came to Perry Sound uh, back in what, 1980, 81? Two. 82. And uh, you started with the school board as a superintendent, but you became the director of education uh, just a little later. And so you had lots of experience with the various schools. Uh, could you describe your experience with Victory School, uh, you know, walking through the doors and the, the high ceilings and such? Well, Victory was had a, a unique ambiance. You know, it, it like I, I guess it looked like a stone fortress. There's nothing similar in in the community. A, an old school, even in, in, when I came, it was I guess one of the oldest or the oldest. And then they had the boys' entrance and the girls' entrance. But you walked into a, a, a school with wide corridors, wide stairways, creaky floors. They, we all laughed at the creaky floors. But you just felt at home in that school. It had a smell of a school. You know, the, the chalk dust, the, the, the law, the core, the, what they call them, the cloak rooms in the back of the room. It, it was just, hey, this is something like you read about, like in Palm Sawyer, Anne of Green Gables. This is Victory School, a great place. But, you know, they had the modern little wing, the, the playroom and the kindergarten rooms, and always friendly, friendly staff principal's office and the secretary's office right at the entranceway and uh, a, a good warm feeling for that school and I, I always did have that plus it was the only school that was uh, K to 6 the other schools all went of course K to 8 and then right. JK to 8 so Victory was un unique in that fashion so you graduated from Victory to William Beattie